Um, have you ever thought of um, the basically the the physical manifestation of a tweet or of a poke or like a wall posting on on Facebook uh, or on Twitter? So, uh, if you have ever wondered where all these tweets and pokes are stored, uh, this is the answer. So basically, this is an aerial view of uh, one of the one of the data centers of Facebook, and it's in Primal, Oregon, and it's a huge uh, warehouse. Um, it's full with servers and it consumes a lot of energy. Uh, it basically needs its own power plant to be powered on. And it's highly surveilled, of course, and uh, uh, it's really loud in there. So basically, you know, uh, all these things we do like virtually, they also have some sort of impact on the, onto the real world. And, uh, we, we can actually consider this as a kind of a new new form of uh, power and manifestation of, uh, of, an, of a sort of an architecture. But if we're talking about the architecture of uh, all these services, uh, one thing comes to our mind imme immediately is that uh, the idea of a panopticon. So basically uh, what all those platforms have in common is that they are uh, centralized. So everything I'm communicating to you is basically going through the Facebook server and is being stored there, uh, is being processed, is being used for other things we, we don't know and we are, will never uh, get to know because uh, Facebook is quite uh, uh, reluctant to give you any information what happens actually to your data once you upload it. So basically we can think of, uh, and this is this slide, uh, uh, of uh, Facebook, uh, like it's like a man in the middle. So it's like you know, it, uh, your information is being passed, but I, I'm not really communicating to you. But it's going through the server. Uh, and if I take a look at the friendship list, then I'm immediately like I'm doubting if all these people I have on Facebook, like all these uh, kind of nodes, if those are my real friends, yeah, uh, because. In a way, Facebook made a really clever um, uh, colonization of the term friend. So what is a friend? Uh, it's not, uh, if I take a look at these people, like not, not all of them are my real friends. Uh, some of them are institutions, some of them are random people, some of them are business people uh, I have never met or I will never meet. Or, um, so, are those my real friends? Um, well, in fact, they are some sort of friends, but they're also what they are, basically they're a manifestation of, a, of an identity which is being created. So it's basically an avatar. And if you think of avatars, um, they're basically, well, from the Buddhistic tradition, they're reincarnations of goddess onto earth. And, uh, we give them like always a profile picture and we associate them with our profiles but an avatar is more or less I would say it's basically a blurry image of of yourself so basically you're always representing yourself on those platforms but uh, is that identity you're creating is that basically a reflection of the things you think or the, the things you want to be or isn't it more or less like a kind of blurry shadow image you're um, you're just uh, representing. If I go back here, others, my real friends, uh, sociologists say that uh, usually, usually you have 150 friends. That's the amount of friends you, you have. Uh, if you have more than this, then basically you're getting uh, into, a, you need to manage them. Yeah, you can't stay in contact anymore with more than 100. I mean, that's just a number, but it gives you an idea. Uh, then basically you have to you have to manage them or you have to you know like uh, sort them. I don't know how many friends politicians have, but yeah, I guess quite a lot. Uh, and this is a, a simulation of of me trying to uh, deactivate my account. So actually, what happens if we if we want to if we want to get rid of this identity we created? And you see here the first thing you're confronted is uh, with pictures from my friends. So these are. Um, um, and they all say they will miss you. And, but not the only thing is that you're basically put into this 
uh, uncomfortable position that someone will miss me. Uh, will, yeah. And you also have to give some reasons why you want to leave. And then I was not specific. I just wanted to say other. And I had to put in my password. And then I uh, select a reason. Please select a reason because you can't just say other because then you have to write something. But you see, every time Facebook basically has an answer. And then finally, after typing in five times your password, solving the capture, you finally uh, get your account deactivated. I was still not good. Oh, yeah. And then it's interesting, it locks you out. And to reactivate, you just log in again. And then all of a sudden, phew, any sparks was born. <laughs> uh, so this is just a way of deactivating. And deactivating means only that basically you're uh, hibernating your account. So everything is still basically stored. And uh, once you log in, you're back again. There is also a delete function where basically you permanently delete your account, but still you have two weeks of rethinking <laughs> and where you can still log in again. So uh, if we take a look closer onto these options, I just focus them out because you, you I guess you were not able to read them. Um, there are always these n nice answers which you are given by Facebook. So if you say, I don't feel safe on Facebook, then of course you can alter your privacy settings and you know, everything's fine. Uh, but you can also say, I don't find Facebook useful. Then they are, uh, basically they give you this hint that you basically should just connect more. So you just get, <laughs> get more into the network, take more drugs, uh, then you will find it useful. Or other people also, friends, said to me very often, uh, I spend too much time on Facebook. And then they give you also this uh, information that you can control your interaction with Facebook by limiting the number of emails you receive. And uh, well, this was the reason why we started the Web 2.0 suicide machine. Uh, um, one of the reasons. And maybe I will just I was missing my family. quickly show you this video. My kids growing up. A promotion video. My wife. I didn't even have time to cook dinner for them. And then something great happened. I discovered the web 2.0 suicide machine and things were about to change. Look, you just go to www.suicidemachine.org and choose the network you want to be deleted from. So here I fill in my username and my password. Immediately the machine starts working and through a flash plugin, I can see the process. The suicide server takes over now. It launches the Firefox browser automatically and logs into my account. Each action is automated. First the password is changed. Now, once I've committed suicide, I will never be able to try to resurrect myself. One really nice feature of the Web 2.0 suicide machine is that slowly you see your online life passing away. It's exactly like they say the last minute of your real life is like, but then slow and fun. Look, there's so many people you actually didn't really care about. Isn't time precious these days? You know that scientists prove that sending and receiving emails actually makes you more stupid? What about all these mails you get from all these social network related people? Most of the time you don't even know them. It doesn't make your life better. You always think you're missing something. And above all, it makes you more stupid. Online experience is absolutely no substitute for real-time experience. All the images, YouTube links, and tweets leave us feeling empty. Get your life back. Faster, safer, shorter, better. Sign out forever. Suicidemachine.org. It's your life. It's your choice. So, um, yeah, we kind of over the, the whole thing and we made it really spectacular. Also, we made kind of a parody out of the, the whole thing. But uh, at the same time, where we were developing this, this whole machine uh, or this server, um, uh, unfriending became also word of the year in, from, from the Oxford Dictionary and um, it also, we, actually I, did, I was living in Holland and unfriending also the Dutch word of the year was 
und Freunden, which means unfriending in Dutch. So there was this huge uh, kind of reflection or this aha uh, that everyone thought like, oh shit, I'm spending too much time on, on Facebook. So, but uh, the whole thing started actually as a as a real world event or what we uh, we worked with this uh, institution, the cultural 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 institution born. Um, and we organized a suicide night. Uh, so basically this was uh, a normal event where we just uh, invited people to come and delete their accounts. But we asked them to, to drop by and just log into their accounts and delete everything they posted. You know, like it's really like a manual hand job. And it, will, it takes some time to do this, of course. And when we were doing this, we thought like, yeah, well, why are we clicking on this? Well, machines are much better in doing that, right? And then we basically uh, developed some sort of prototype uh, on this in the suicide machine night. And uh, we deleted the account of the director of this institution. Uh, it was a LinkedIn account. So LinkedIn is this professional web to point network. And it was really funny because we beat that uh, whole procedure. And you saw always these people popping up, which everyone knew. And it's like, do you really want to remove? And then, yes. So the machine, it, it was kind of interesting to watch this process uh, happen. And this is the, uh, the team, actually, I, I lost my beard. But uh, this is Walter, Danja, and uh, me. And we developed this whole thing in Rotterdam. So also what we came up with was basically a website in the end, uh, where we presented the whole project as sort of a, kind of a startup company. You know, we made all this, uh, uh, graphical design choices you can you think of when you want to make a really fancy look inside. So you have um, this mirrored font, you know, and a glossy logo, everything in pink, and then um, some really uh, catchy um, uh, words, you know, open, smart, 100% satisfaction, faster, safer, smarter, better. Uh, and one of the things we also had was this, uh, this is actually zoom out, uh, uh, we had here on the right where you could click. <coughs> we had uh, sorry. Uh, like a counter. Basically, to me, it looked almost like a game counter because, like, the statistics were always changing. Once a person was uh, committing this uh, certain step, then you you could see um, 300 friends have been unfriended and 500,000 tweets were removed. Uh, and the funny thing was, once we, when we started this project. There were, it was like 1,000 friends have been removed, you know. And it's, it, it sounded so ridiculous compared to 500 million users. So what we did, we just multiplied it by 10 in the beginning, these numbers. And, and the funny thing with journalists, they just copy-pasted it, you know. The journalists, they, they don't check actually, because they also they don't really have time. So uh, it was really interesting to see, that was actually the beginning where we understood uh, how the whole project is communicated outside of, of our little circle. And we also had a FAQ, so like frequently asked questions, <laughs> where we basically explained everything in a really nice and friendly way. Uh, we started, if I, if I start killing myself, can I stop the process? No. Can I stop the process? No. Uh, what shall I do after doing this? You should go try, try calling someone, <laughs> go for a coffee, <laughs> have a glass of wine. It, it will feel better, yeah? <laughs> so we, we kind of started this, uh, we, we kept on communicating that we are, we are good people, you know, we just care about everyone. And this is actually, we also had a wall of fame where we um, had like the most, like the top 10 users who really committed most of their social life, of their online social life. And she was absolutely the top one. She had 25,000 friends on MySpace. Like there was, I think the second place only had like 4,000 friends, but, and the third less, but, and the funny thing was that she was also called catharsis, you know, it's like deep clean. Mm -hmm. uh, it took a while to, to get her off. And <laughs> <laughs> because the machine also, it does nothing else than just clicking, you know, remove, 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 and that takes some time. And also uh, what happened was that in the beginning, the Facebook uh, script, they have some scripts on the server, and they immediately banned us because uh, they saw that there's something really regularly doing. 
But then we just put in some random delays be between all the functions, you know, clicking and then waiting. So <laughs> it, it appeared to be more human, actually, than the suicide mission. <laughs> but then uh, what happened was that, uh, yeah, it, it went into the mainstream media. So all of a sudden Time Magazine was calling you up and then asking about uh, what's going on and why, why you're offering. And this was the, one of the, f basically the fact was that uh, after we launched this project, like four weeks later, uh, we were confronted with this, and uh, basically they just banned our IP address, so we could not access the Facebook Facebook at all. So when, when we typed in Facebook, you were confronted with this, and basically you had four uh, upload functions here. You see, you could upload a file. I still don't know what to upload. You you can upload something, maybe your image or something, and. Then it really became like the whole hype around it because uh, the only thing the mainstream media had was actually the video you've seen before. And in that video, everything is being basically explained. And uh, most of the journalists, they just watched the video and then just wrote a story about it. And then uh, the story was always like, Facebook kills the suicide machine. So it was very dramatic and you know, everyone wanted to know what is happening and why are Facebook killing, is killing someone. And then even, you know, we, we surpassed the suicide bombers in Afghanistan. Uh, so suicide, the word itself became kind of popular. Uh, we also got problems for that because there was, there is a, a Swiss, actually it's, it's I think from Geneva, uh, uh, international organization who keeps track of uh, uh, suicide mentioning in terms of in, in media. And they were writing us a really angry letter that we, that we're making fun of suicide and it's really a serious uh, issue and that we should change the name of the project into something else. And we always argued them back, yeah, it's, you know, it's, we know that it's a serious uh, issue, but we were always uh, mentioning it as a Web 2.0 suicide. And then we also said, uh, for us, it's an art intervention. It's not, we are not making money with that. Um, uh, and uh, <coughs> since it's a serious issue, you know, art has to deal sometimes also with serious stuff. Uh, not only funny things. So basically, what why I'm showing this? This is the villa, the, the house of Barbara Streisand, and uh, she she tried <laughs> she tried to sue uh, the photographer for this because he was actually just photographing the coast of uh, California, I think, and and he was just making aerial photographs of the whole coast. And it happened that her villa was on one of these pictures, and then she tried to sue that guy for ten million dollars. Uh, and because of that, the whole picture became actually really popular. Otherwise, no one would have known that this is Barbara Streisand. So actually, some sort of thing is whoops, happened happened to Facebook. So it happened, it went to CNN and, and whatever, but also to Russia. So it also, out of a sudden it appeared in TV and it was even more funnier to watch because it also went to Brazilian TV and German and then people really started to explain it to some, you know, uh, old people sitting in a couch and all of a sudden they confront it with Facebook and then they see and actually it's really funny because the, you see that the, the depth of coverage was getting less and less so they were just also these Russians they just copy pasted our video into it and did, they did no research whatsoever on the project they just uh, took the headlines together and and then this happened oh thank god <laughs> hey Stan my computer says we're not friends anymore my Facebook profile went rogue, Dad. Had to go to the circuitry and do battle with it. I sent all my friends somewhere else. Okay. So we're we're not friends then. Not oh, Dad. So you see, uh, in that screen, uh, there was the the website of the suicide machine, but this is fake. <laughs> it's a it's it's fake. But it's a funny thing because uh, we saw that episode when it was released and we thought like, why, fuck, they didn't mention our project. <laughs> and, 
What we did was we just inserted these two screens and re-uploaded the this this show onto Pirate Bay and uh, the torrent itself. Um, we wrote another script where basically the amount of seeders got virtually increased. So we had 500 seeders for this torrent. Uh, so it appeared always, if you looked for this episode, it appeared as one of the first. So it replic re replicated very quickly into the net. And we also, we, we kind of were cautious. So we made exactly the same file size and, and exactly the same file length and, and so on. So, um, but on the other hand, the, the project gave also some afterlife. Um, this is actually, yeah, it's an Austrian context. Uh, there is this right-wing politician, you maybe know, heard of him, it's H.C. Strache. Uh, he made a really um, interesting, he's always claiming, I don't know if uh, Slovenian politicians are also that successful. Uh, they're trying to use social media and to pretend they are cool and pr <laughs> approach new, uh, kind of new uh, voters. And uh, this guy, he's doing it very well. So he has like he's claiming that he has the most appearance in in, in Web 2.0. And there was a there was a really good project being done by some anonymous people. They basically claimed that uh, can this uh, soulless brick uh, can it have more friends than that guy? And it has like I don't know uh, you don't see, it. but it it has like 150,000 or 200,000 friends. And the guy himself, he started a campaign that I bet I can have more friends than this soulless brick. <laughs> and yeah, he has like 4,000. So it, it didn't really work out. But the other thing was that actually many people also got kind of pissed that this guy is like, you know, he's like trying to push himself into all, into different channels and all of a sudden you get associated with, with that guy. Uh, so there was a, another version being done, it's called Entstrache uh, Dich, so basically un, Unstrache Neiser. And we, we, made it, we made a Serbian and a Turkish version because he's also uh, actively trying to communicate to the uh, Serbian community in Vienna and to the Turkish community that you know the new foreigners are really bad. Uh, so we made also a multilingual version. And the thing it does, it's actually, it's acting quite similar to the suicide machine, but it just logs into your account and then checks if one of your friends are uh, somehow affiliated with that guy and then automatically unfriends you. <laughs> uh, what happened to us with the suicide machine was that we received some letters from Facebook. Uh, so they are they're so-called the cease and desist letters. So basically you're, they want to take down your domain. Um, our actor here, Edna, he consulted a lawyer, uh, which happened to look like Michel Foucault. <laughs> but uh, and then, with the accusation that we are not allowed to do this and we're, we're not allowed to scrape content and uh, we have to take it down immediately, but since our server was based in Holland, we thought, okay, we just keep it on and they will not sue us immediately. But uh, also, another thing appeared that they they had a typo mistake, they, it was the year 2010 and they, they asked us to answer a year ahead. So basically first we wrote them back and sorry we can't answer you, we have to build a time machine. Uh, but <laughs> they, were not, yeah, they were not funny at all about it, so they, they, sent, they were keeping sending us letters. But also what they did was that basically they changed um, the login procedure. So once you log in now from your Facebook account, from outside of your country, <coughs> you are basically they ask you to verify friends and to you have to solve a capture as well and you have to fill out your birthday and you know there are many many things and you know it happens even to people that once they are traveling they can't log in because they are confronted with all these uh, logging steps. So that was the reason why actually they shut uh, they, they actually succeeded in shutting us down uh, after this cat and mouse game where we tried to up update our script and, and uh, basically we're still kind of an open issue but I think they realized that that we are just you know like we're really small fish in that whole thing and because I think in the first letters it really they really wanted to go against us and because they thought we are we are making money with the data or we are we are like a big mysterious group of anonymous people uh, so Actually, reclaim your data is like the 
maybe the bigger picture or the um, the idea that also you know you can disrupt the, those systems and this also maybe mentioned in our critical engineering manifesto that you all these systems like um, be, be it Facebook or all these big huge companies whatsoever uh, if you you can inject some certain noise into this because they always seem to be uh, functional and working and uh, you know there's no there's no uh, friction at all or whatsoever so uh, with that project we try to inject some noise and what we also what actually what was interesting that uh, we started it out of a concern for, of privacy but also you know what happens to do you really want to upload your pictures to Facebook and give them all your, give them non-exclusive rights to, to use your picture and you know it's basically a, a, a monetization of your friends and uh, this was partly then discussed into in, in uh, thousands of uh, forums and uh, websites and the suicide machine was a really good example for them to use since you know um, it's very easy to join these networks but you see it's not always that easy to to leave them and even if you get assistance uh, by our website it's uh, even more complicated and uh, we received tons of emails like really thousands of emails and <coughs> I want to show you one I, I really like it because first I didn't open it because it has a, uh, a video attachment and uh, I thought no I don't want to you know someone sending you a video it's already creepy and it had five megabytes but uh, yeah the subject was what I've done since I give I, I gave up on Facebook and uh, sorry for the video quality it's 167 beats per minute uh, uh, early points show to awesome <laughs> so basically it's a sonogram of uh, this newborn and uh, so basically I want to end my presentation with uh, a slight modification of, of uh, Igor's title so I would propose make love not spam your friends <laughs> thank you <laughs>